Uh, Manifesto was started in 1989 after the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was a reaction of the um, lack of East-West dialogue uh, in the former communist period. And in the post-war um, period, Manifesto was one of the players, we were not the only player, one of the players who took the initiative to create a closer uh, network for all the cultural producers, artists and curators in East and West Europe. It was a Dutch initiative based on a question from eight European countries. And the grounding idea, the groundbreaking idea of a Biennale, which didn't have a national representation, but much more focusing on a um, curatorial thematic approach and giving young curators and young artists the chance to perform on an international network, came from Gijs van Tuyl who at that moment was director of the Netherlands Office for Fine Arts. And he asked me as, um, as a project coordinator to start uh, the, the entire idea. His ideas of this new European, pan-European platform were based on the Biennale de la Jeunesse, which was operating till, I think, 1983 in Paris. So Manifesto is focused on setting up not only Two year, every two years, an international biennial of contemporary art, but also involving every two years a new group of young curators who are invited to come up with a new curatorial model. So it's not only about the inter-European collectivity, but it's a lot about new methodologies and curatorial practices. Since the unique aspect of Manifesta is that it's the only nomadic biennial, meaning we move every two years from city to city. Also meaning that Manifesto is very much based upon a geopolitical aspects of where it is taking place. So it's not only the artistic practices, but it's the artistic practices in a site-specific context. Manifesta started in the Netherlands in 1993. Uh, also because its uh, first edition took place in Rotterdam. Um, the main initiative is all coming together in the Manifesto Foundation, which is now based in Amsterdam. It has seven permanent employees. And Manifesto Foundation and the Manifesto Biennial are one organization. So it is a partly permanent organization and a partly temporarily organization set up in every two years. Since Manifesto is not only focusing on artistic practices in the Biennale, but also on a kind of theoretical discourse. In 2000, I started a series of projects in a biennial network organization in which publications, a journal, Manifesto Coffee Break, which are a series of conferences, are part of a very necessarily ongoing discussion about what is the biennial, how could we function, how are curatorial methodologies are changing, how are artistic practices changing, what is the role of the cure. It's a much more educational mediation part of our work. Many people are always asking, how is Manifesto selecting its candidates cities or candidate regions because we both have regional manifestos or city-based manifestos and we play a little bit this kind of Olympic model so we invite countries, regions, cities to become uh, to make a bit in which it is described why they want to host the manifesta and what could be the geopolitical reason for us to go to these specific regions. And then we do a very, very intensive uh, investigation in which it needs to be extremely clear that we are not only functioning as a kind of political tool, but much more as a kind of catali catalyst between different parties and mainly being supported by the artistic uh, by the artistic people in a region or a city or the artistic producers so that there is a, a real realistic expectation of what Manifesta can do and how Manifesta can function. Manifesta's main um, difference with all the other biennials is that we are not uh, based in one city but we have the possibility to move around which also is the complexity 
of Manifesta because it is actually uh, giving us a lot of opportunities in terms of looking for peripheral parts of Europe in which the history or the context is a little bit un uh, unknown, but at the same time build up a system in which artists and curators can function every two years is quite intense because we really want to go deeply grounded in the local context and not only superficially fly in and out. This kind of synergetic um, development between a permanent team and the local team for two or three years is, I think, the unique character of Manifesto. Manifesto is mostly known because of its change in curatorial models. In the first editions of Manifesta, young curators were always operating in the format of a collective and mostly operating in the methodology of creating consensus amongst each other, which was also quite an interesting and a complex process. In the last three or four Manifestas, we were experimenting very much with already existing teams. We were experimenting with collectives in which not only um, art historians and curators were working, but also theoreticians and artists themselves. In this respect, we tried to re-identify what is the role of the curator in a biennial and how can we change this role, not only in perspective of the relationship towards the artist, but also the relationships in a more interdisciplinary way. So this is like in Manifesta 7, you could see th uh, three teams in which there were artists, writers, filmmakers, and also in Manifesta 8 there were filmmakers, media players, there were collectives. And I think in this respect also it is part of the globalization process that not only the typical model of um, an art historian as a curator, but much more um, interdisciplinary backgrounds turn up. Um, Manifesta is moving also um, more outside to the, to the very periphery of what is called Europe and in this respect also new models are tested in which also the model can fail because maybe everybody identifies the uh, Manifesta 6 in which the curatorial model was uh, already prescribed that they were a collective before we started, and as a collective they proposed a groundbreaking model of turning a biennial into a school. And this is like the super experimental character, which always has or might have the consequence that it fails, but that is something we wouldn't allow all the time, but it could be a consequence of a process. I think for Manifesta the site specificness is very obvious, since our first research before even identifying which Manifesta city becomes the final host city is a very intensive, site-specific, political, historical research. So for all the artists, but also for the curators, the site-specificness is the starting point of how they want to work within the Manifesta context. I can't really judge how other biennials or perennial events are working in this respect. Um, in Manifesta, it's had, it has its specificness, and the specificness, I think, is also um, resulting in that more than 80% of the works are based on research of artists uh, and the curators in the, in the areas where we work. So you could say, like, maybe also the unique part of Manifesta is the research-based uh, event. And this is also visible in part of the uh, budget, because uh, one-third of the budget is based on artists who are allowed to make this research and produce new works in the site-specific context. The Manifesto Biennial has a basic budget of three million. This is the budget in which we need to cover all the cost of, uh, as I told you before, the curatorial research, the artistic research and the production of new works. Since I said 80% of most of the biennials produce new works. Um, since part of the long-term effect of Manifesta is that we are, are functioning as a catalyst in the local um, context, most of Manifesta's venues are not the white cube spaces but historical venues which we refurbish. So it could be true that the Manifesta has 
3.5 for the exhibition and 7 million for the refurbishment. But this is, and this is, I think, also a kind of a, a very extraordinary part of the manifesta uh, nomadic structure, which is like, has this kind of temporarily functioning, but at the same time it's focusing together with the initiators in the local host city on a long-term impact. How can Manifesta play a role which goes much further than this kind of one and a half year preparation of an exhibition? And I think there are many um, examples. We used in uh, Fortezza, northern Italy, uh, for the first time a 15,000 square meters fortress which was refurbished for Manifesta and which is now functioning as an exhibition space, but also in Murcia, we used many buildings. This model of using non-white cube or black cube spaces, non-museum spaces, was already one of the main parameters from the first manifesto in Rotterdam onwards. Also demanded and depicted because of the wishes of curators and artists to go outside this very specific white cube frame. People are always asking about the financial aspects of a nomadic biennial, and we can be extremely open and clear about it. The permanent office in Manifesta is financed by the European Commission and the Dutch government and some private sponsors. The biennials are a mix of many different financial stakeholders. Of course, there's always like the local entity, the region, sometimes the nation state and a combination of private and international funding. Almost all the European countries, the arts councils are financing, co-financing manifestos. So that is a kind of a collage, a patchwork. And it could range according to what curators want to do. From, as I already said, the, the, the biennial itself could function in between three and seven million uh, euro. It's depending on, on what we need to do and how deeply we are participating in refurbishment programs in the city itself. Very important uh, specifically for a nomadic biennial is to focus also on what is the position of Manifesto on the long term and the short term. But not only in terms of are we able to reinforce the infrastructure since we most of the time take place in perif peripheral areas. Are we able to create a certain visibility are we able to maybe, together with the local stakeholders and cultural producers, go deeply into setting up a new infrastructure we could later serve? And you can think in buildings, you can think even in, in atmosphere, in working methodology, in, in creating a network. I think, for example, for Murcia, it was very interesting that we could provide Murcian stakeholders with some international networks on an academic level, um, but also like the very concrete expectations from regional stakeholders in terms of branding, feasibility and economical return on investment. Manifesto fulfills those aspects. But there are, of course, expectations on the long-term impact. And this is a little bit difficult to prove sometimes, but we are always focusing, and this has to do with education, mediation, and all the tools which are used to instrumentalize that Manifesta has been able to create an accessibility, not only for the international art crowd, but for the local and regional audiences. So everybody is always uh, expecting that Manifesta is based on an international audience. It's not true. 70%, 60-70% of our audiences and visitors come from the region and the, the local areas. 30% comes from the international. Um, the last three manifestos were closely to 100,000 or a little bit over 100,000. But this is also like a little bit complex number because we had 3 to 14 venues in which we didn't calculate exactly how many people were visiting how many venues. There is a huge amount of energy and budget going in education and mediation and not in the traditional sense of education in terms of providing guided tools but much more on a processual way. So the education department starts already one and a half year in advance to really go deeply into the existing community structures and to try to interact with community structures to develop a certain kind of participatory scheme in which 
people who are normally not very much um, interested or not automatically visiting contemporary art are trying to be persuaded to do their first steps. And the moment they're inside the exhibitions, a large series of instruments are set in place in which it could be family days, artists who provide part of the mediation and education processes, social activists who work together with communities in the region, and on which this kind of growing structure of how to interact with the locality is giving a very vast ground. As it is depicted in our title, Manifesto the European Biennial for Contemporary Art, our view is a helicopter view on Europe and its relationships with the uh, continents very close to Europe. But, but there could be the possibility that Manifesta might in the future also re-identify its original European role in thinking about what were relationships of Europe with other continents. And the first Manifesta, Manifesta 8, in which it was like slightly uh, investigated was the dialogue with Northern Africa, but it could also mean that in the future we will invite curators from other parts of the world and even like smaller projects taking place in a transcontinental European setting. It's quite obvious that Manifesta is not a traditional museum institutionalized Biennale. It is mostly taking place in exterior venues or historical venues and venues mostly which already form part of the memoria of the community in which there is a, a clear social interaction between the function of the building and the people, the users of the buildings in the past. I don't know exactly in what position Manifesta is in, in comparison to all the other international events. We're not so much focusing and, and investigating our position. What we're trying to do uh, and trying to uh, set forward is an investigation in how Manifesta as an event, maybe not even as a biennial in the future, can reinvent itself, not only in terms of geographically positioning, but also in terms of curatorial model or biennial model. So it could be potentially true that we are investigating possibilities outside Europe and going more deeply into relationships of Europe and other continents in historical perspective, but also in social perspective, art historical perspective. It could be true that Manifesta is looking for different curatorial concepts in which not only contemporary art plays the main role, but a much more interdisciplinary, but also historically new disciplines could be involved. It could be true that Manifesta is looking into different roles than the exhibition format as the main part of our biennial construction. Every moment where we are thinking about a new base, the investigation of what is needed in this new base, in this new host city, is the starting discussion of what kind of model should be implemented. So it could be true that in one of the next manifestos could take place in Ukraine, not in the term of a, terms of a representational format, but in terms of an educational format, in terms of a school or, a, or an academic or a curatorial training school or something like this. What we would like to do is that people in host regions who make the bid are giving us a very clear perspective of what role of function Manifesta can play. And this is partly the synergetic development in which we are not landing in a host city as, a, as an airplane and just throwing something, but we would like to have a processual development in which host cities give us a very big impetus on what we should do.